Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's to see you again. We're back in the fish room. I've just come back from a holiday, just over a week. And I made a video last time about all the things I would do to prepare for a holiday. This time we're going to have a look at what we do to return from a holiday, how we get things back on track. So in the last video I talked about the previous videos I've made about auto feeders and things like that, not using them. Uh, in the last video I said I was going to use them and I can confirm that worked flawlessly. We didn't have any failures, all the tanks that I put auto feeders on, they worked perfectly. And the reason I know they work perfectly is that I also set up some cameras. Some time ago, I've been running these for a couple of years now, um, since I moved into this house, in fact, I've got the Blink CCTV cameras. I just got a good deal on them one day, a Black Friday at some point. Uh, the remote cameras, so I can set them up anywhere. I can move them around, I can point them at different tanks, and I can see them from anywhere in the world. So anytime I'm away, whether it's for work or for pleasure or whatever, I know what's going on. Normally, that's a bit of a halfway house to actually being a solution, because if I see a problem, if I'm on the other side of the world, what am I going to do about it? So you need to have a backup plan, some friends or family that can come if you ask them to say that they found a problem. So using the cameras, I could monitor the tanks while I was away and make sure the feeders were kicking off, were not overloading the tanks, the fish were taking the food, all that kind of stuff. And it worked really well. So I set them up uh, monitoring the, I've got like 30 tanks in here, so I, I couldn't cover everything, but I set them up on the main racks and mega tank and my discus tank. And that worked really well for me. Um, the last check before I took my flight home from my holiday, I could see the fish feeding, um, I could see the fish moving around in the discus tank. Everything was good. All things were well. So I would definitely recommend something like that. Any of the products that I mentioned, I'll put the links in the description and let you know where you can get them from. Obviously, if you only have one tank, you don't need to buy four cameras, you don't need to do quite the things that I'm going to mention here. Hopefully some of it will translate. So, when you actually get back and get home, tip number one, or job number one, I like to do is a visual check, a head count. Go around all the tanks, look and see what's going on. Um, you can count fish, you can look for deaths, you can look for any anything visibly wrong, a filter not working, an air pump clogged. Um, an excess of food buildup, an excess of algae buildup, all those kind of things and say, right, that's a problem and make a list. So you make a list of, right, I've got a dead fish in that tank, I've got loads of algae buildup in this one, that air sponge needs cleaning, whatever it is, and then that's your job. That's your job list to go around and sort everything out. When doing that, one fish death, that's what I've, that's what I've ascertained. Unfortunately, it was quite a significant fish, so it was a mega tank death. We have unfortunately lost Gordon, the Emperor Snakehead. Um, talked a little bit about it on my live stream last week. I don't know what happened. The last check I did before I flew home, I could see Gordon swimming around, I could see him eating. Um, and then when I got home, a day and a half later, he was dead. Don't know what went on. He'd obviously died in that period between the two. It's fairly obvious. Um, I just don't know. Um, what, one of the problems is I don't know how old Gordon was because he came to me, he was a rescue to me, fully grown. I've had him for two years, if not more. Um, he was fully grown at that point already. In the wild, they kind of live five to seven years. So it may have been old age. Um, there are arguments to say, well, in captivity, they live a little bit less or a little bit longer. I'm not sure who to believe but he was of an age where it could have been natural causes. The thing that makes me think it's natural causes is every other fish is fine in Mega Tank. The tank is operating perfectly and the water parameters are fine. And that takes me on to job number two is I go around and test every tank. It may seem like a faff, it may seem like if you're one of those people that says, I don't need to do water tests, I know by looking at my tanks what's wrong. I do it anyway because I've not been monitoring my tanks for a week because I've been away. I've not been seeing up close what's going on. It, 
doesn't hurt to do water tests. I don't know why people are so anti doing them. They think they're so godlike fish keepers that don't need to do these things. Why wouldn't you do these things? So water test on mega tank, even though we had Gordon in there, no ammonia. So it was very much just caught it after he died. It wasn't there long enough to rot and foul the water really. Um, still gutted because he was a fantastic big fish. But hopefully I gave his last couple of years were good years where he got to live in a good sized tank that he ruled. So RIP Gordon. Um, I can do nothing but write it off as one of those things. I think it must have been old age. Um, he's always eaten well, he's always been very healthy, he's never shown signs of being like raggedy or anything like that. So hopefully it was just his time and he is gone. But that enforces why you do water tests because if you have lots of fish in a tank and small fish, if it's hiding behind a rock somewhere and you don't see it, a water test will show up if there's anything going wrong. So job number two is I have gone round and done water tests everywhere. Everything is fine. So all my all my precautions worked. Um, all I'm going to do now is job number three, which is water changes. So we're currently doing a big water change on here. It's been running, topping up. I think we've done two or 300 litres at the moment. Um, just to give them a nice fresh water change. If you only have one water change and you've only been away for a week, you're probably not behind. But I kind of run a schedule on here where I work my way around the room constantly. So at least some of the tanks have missed out on water changes. So that's my next job is getting around them and getting them sorted out. And really nothing more than that. Lots of people will tell you things like, oh, give them a big feed when you come back. That's, to me, the same as give them a big feed before you go away. It's not a normal thing that you would do. You can cause more problems, fish get bloated, they can get ill because of it. Just continue, pick up where you left off with a normal amount of maintenance and a normal routine. Get back to normality as much as you can. Um, so visual checks, water parameter tests, water changes to get you back into your routine and you should be good to go. And that's what we are doing now. And it's the same story for the rest of the tanks. All the, the Danios, whether it's the Baby Discus, the German Rams, whatever it is, they've all coped really well. So again, I'm not gonna go mental and start feeding everything. I'm gonna do normal size water changes a little bit more aggressively now than I would normally. I will try and do all these tanks over the weekend and then get back into a normal routine. You can never, over water change uh, and then we should be good to go and even though I have lost one of my favourite fish, biggest fish, it's been quite a successful trip away. There's, I've not wiped out any tanks and that's what I was worried about. Um, so definitely worth it to invest in the cameras and having someone that can come across if you can get someone and just sort it out. The main things I was worried about would be if I noticed a fish dead, I'd ask them to come down and whip it out. If it had been anything like filters had gone off or electricity had gone off, yeah, maybe they could flip some breakers, but anything more complicated than that, maybe not. Um, but these are the things you have to consider when you go away on holiday. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm kind of happy. The tanks in the house, they seem to have stood up well. The ponds have stood up well. The tadpoles have started to grow legs. And uh, so my frog army or toad army or whatever they are, I don't know how that will work, should be with us in a couple of weeks, so keep keep watching if you want to see that. Um, now it's just a case of yeah, getting busy and getting all this water changes and cleaning done because there's a wee bit of algae build up. The kind of things that I would get just on a day to day basis go, oh that one's got a little bit of algae, I'll get in there with a sponge and clean it off. I've got a lot more of that to do but that's fine. Job's good. On the plants front, uh, one of my previous videos you saw me set up the mister. That has worked really well. So everything is still flourishing in there with no problems. The mister has worked like clockwork, as it should. So plenty of plants still available on aquariumadventures.co.uk. The ones where I had them, these are the, the first set that I got that have been kept underwater, have started to experience some die off and grow back. So I might sort this out at some point so as you can see whether they're immersed or submersed. Um, Rest assured, if you buy some plants, I will send you the healthiest version of the plants that we've got. A lot of these have taken off sale until they're fully back to their proper good health. Um, yeah, everything's doing well. This tank, I don't know what's going on. So this is my grow out tank. I've got the 
juvenile silver dollars down there and this guy who is destined to become a bit of a beast um, but yeah what's happened here? where's all that come from? I suspect the light has stuck on so I've got some work to do there look at this grumpy bugger he's going to clean my tank what is this mess? we'll sort you out sir don't worry this is one of my experiments you'll see this in a future video where I've taken some tadpoles from the pond and put them in this little tank outside um, it's very hard to see here, but they've just started to grow little back legs that have come out. They're basically just feeding on the green water. Um, there's an air pump in there that kicks in every now and again. And they do water changes from the pump, but a week on their own and they're all fine. Frog army coming soon. Pond wise, the big pond. Again, ran flawlessly. Got a little bit of clean up to do. Apologies, it's a bit windy. Um, but this plant here has collapsed and fallen into the pond. The fish don't seem to mind. The lilies are coming through. These marginal plants have fallen in again. So, my margin building skills aren't great. Lilies are coming through down at that end as well. You can see some of the fish. Just hanging out and the filter working pretty well. Really happy with this, this is looking good. Haven't had to do anything, this will get fed because there's loads of wildlife, there's loads of dragonflies, little bugs and stuff coming in, water skaters, some of the smaller tadpoles will be food, but there's still plenty of tadpoles in here and uh, the fish are doing well. Everything's all good in here. And then my little stock pond type thing. Again, that's doing fine. The plants are coming on well at that end. The fish that you can probably just see swimming around in there. They're all doing good. The lily kind of uprooted itself, so I've had to replant that, so that'll sort itself out in a few days. Happy, happy, happy. And then the big goldfish tank. The only thing that's going on in here is rapid plant growth. <laughs> so I need to do some trimming, some aquascaping of some of these Eloria. But the fish, all super, all present and corrected, all present and correct and accounted for. You've done pretty well. So that's kind of it. I'm just going to be going around doing all these water changes. Obviously there are ways to make them easier. In this tank, for instance, I've got like a constant drip. I can just turn that up a bit fuller. It will do all the overflow, so I don't need to worry about it. Similar with other tanks, they're all set up to go to drains. If you've only got one or two tanks, then you don't need to worry about this kind of thing. It's not going to be an overly onerous chore for you. Um, it's just part of the fun when you've got a fish room, I guess. Hopefully you found some use in any of that. I look forward to seeing you on Friday night, 9pm at UK time. We do a quiz next month, because it will be June now when this comes out. We'll be starting June's quiz, where we give out a prize at the end of the month for the best quizzer. Some fishy related questions and other things. Um, but it'll be good to see you there, Friday night, 9pm. Come and say hello, ask me any questions you've got. Tell me how wonderful or horrible a fish keeper I am. What you would do better. I am giving you... a Vice, in as much as this is the things that I'm doing after years of doing them but I'm not naive enough to think there aren't better ways to do things so I'm always happy to have suggestions let me know in the comments what you think they are or come along to the live stream and tell me until then, enjoy your fish see you in the next one, bye!